everyone, welcome to GitHub Universe. My name is Steph Moorhead and I am a customer marketing manager at GitHub. And I have the pleasure of working with our customers day in and day out to share their stories. I'm excited to be joined today by two talented DevOps leaders, Justin Trugman and Babitha Singh from Caregility. Caregility is a virtual healthcare platform that seeks to improve how, when, and where healthcare visits take place with an easy to use web application that connects patients with their clinicians. So today we will be talking DevSecOps. For those that might be unfamiliar, DevSecOps is a philosophy of automating security within the DevOps process. But more specifically, we'll be discussing the intersection between empowering developers to do their best work while also keeping your DevOps systems secure. Babitha, I'd like to kick off the session with a question for you. DevSecOps can often sound like a buzzword, but as head of DevOps at Caregility, what does DevSecOps really mean to you? Yeah, DevSecOps is all about DevOps with a lens on security. So it's basically we're looking at a culture change within the organization to enable you to deliver uh, secure software. So development and operations teams within the organization always share the responsibilities because security is everybody's uh, responsibility. And the goal here is to integrate the security objectives within the SDLC process. And you can do that with using various automation tools. The, this cultural transformation in any organization is very essential because uh, the developers a decade or so ago, they would release every few times a year. But now there is more need to deploy software very frequently to production. And so that security integration into the SDLC uh, pipeline is very, very important. And similar to how we talk about continuous integration and continuous delivery, we need to have a thought process. It is a continuous security also. That's great. So Justin, I wanna kick it over to you now to speak to that cultural transformation that Babitha just mentioned. As head of development at Caregility, you understand firsthand how particular developers can be about their tooling. So why is empowering developers to use the tools that work for them so important at Caregility? So if developers are using tools that are not working well for them, it would result in a lot of frustration, and that would mean developers would end up taking shortcuts to work around the, the tooling and in the ways that it's not working for them. That frustration would lower the team's morale. The shortcuts would also end up lowering the quality of work that the team's producing. And all of those things that affect them would be an increased risk for the business to, to take on. By providing developers great tooling and tools that works for them, it makes them more productive and ultimately it helps the team stay happier, the business develop faster, ship more secure software, and ship software more reliably. Absolutely. So considering DevSecOps at Caregility specifically, it's no secret that the healthcare industry requires some of the most stringent security measures in order to protect highly personal information, which is patient data. So Babitha, can you explain why it's so critical for your organization to adhere to rigorous security requirements? It is very important uh, for us to adhere to rigorous security requirements because if the secrets are leaked, then the hackers can get into our databases, compromise patient information, and that results could be catastrophic. So Caregility being a, uh, in a virtual healthcare business, uh, protecting patient privacy and data is of utmost importance for us. And while we all know that no application can ever be 100% uh, free of security flaws, but it's very uh, important for all the organizations to think that, you know, how do we minimize the risk as much as possible? And uh, in the healthcare space specifically, there are HIPAA rules that we have to comply by. And if the organizations uh, fail to comply, then uh, you know they have to pay hefty fine and also there's unnecessary attention, uh, which will lead to reputational damage and uh, also business losses. 
So it's very important for the healthcare uh, specifically to take security very seriously. Absolutely. So as I mentioned at the top of this session, DevSecOps means parties who are a part of the application development lifecycle should be just as accountable for the security of the operation as they are for the development. So Justin, how did you know when it was time to empower developers to take security into their own hands? So Caregility is a fairly young company, being around for a little over three years. And when we first started, security was a very manual and time-consuming process. And as we started to grow very rapidly and as we continue to grow, the manual process wasn't filling the business needs. And we hit an inflection point a little over a year ago where we could have hired high-level security engineers or information security officers, but we found that these types of roles are typically too far away from the product to make a meaningful difference. So what we decided to do was empower the developers to own security, and we figured the people closest to the problems are probably better suited to solving them. And by empowering our developers, we thought we could more efficiently identify, triage, and remediate vulnerabilities in our platform. This is what kind of DevSecOps is all about. It's about having the culture, the processes, the tooling to enable these self-organizing development teams to own the holistic process of building, releasing, and maintaining software. It's important to have security tooling that not only safeguards your code, but is also consumable and easy for developers to integrate into their own workflows. So Babitha, can you walk us through your experience with implementing GitHub into your development lifecycle at Caregility? Yeah, so our journey began this early this year to implement um, GitHub into our SDLC process. And uh, so Justin and I were looking at various tools and we decided on GitHub Enterprise. And the first thing that we were noticing is the developers had their uh, source code in various other tools and we wanted to consolidate all of that into GitHub Enterprise. So then our teams worked very closely together and uh, the first thing that we did is uh, we enabled uh, the CI-CD workflows uh, using GitHub Actions that comes with GitHub Enterprise. And this helped us to automate the code deployments to various environments, you know, uh, dev, QA, et cetera. And uh, that really helped the developers to deploy code faster. And the next thing that we were looking into also, you know, we had the third party audit coming up. And so we were looking at uh, GitHub Advanced Security was at the top of our mind. And so we turned on that GitHub Advanced Security at the organization level. and. GitHub Advanced Security comes with uh, code scanning, secret scanning, and depend about, and, and these are great because code scanning showed us all the potential security vulnerabilities and errors in our code, and secret scanning showed us all those stored secrets that are not stored properly, and uh, also other credentials um, such as keys or tokens or that may have been checked into the repositories by the developers. And so we, the, those, we were able to identify those. And uh, Dependabot notified us of all the vulnerabilities in our dependencies. And so this helped us to know that uh, those vulnerabilities existed before we merged the pull request. So uh, initially when we started this effort, we used GitHub enablement library, and that helped us um, enable this uh, code scanning uh, secret scanning and depend about across all of the 120 plus repositories that were in GitHub Enterprise. Using this, uh, we were able to scan uh, faster uh, instead of uh, you know enabling all of these features manually in each of those uh, repositories. So, one of the other nice uh, features that Justin and I like are uh, GitHub Advanced Security has a nice dashboard. And it allows us to give us that um, visual representation of all high, medium, and low vulnerabilities in one view. And that was really good because then we were able to get with our teams and prioritize how do we remediate each one of those. And so once we were comfortable uh, with um, all of these uh, alerts and the remediation process, then we were able to include this into our GitHub workflow 
that could run continuously for all of the repositories. That's how we were able to completely remediate all of the vulnerabilities and then we were prepared for the third party audit. Great, thank you for taking us deeper into how you implemented GitHub Advanced Security across your organization. So back to you, Justin. Can you comment on how empowering your developer teams to take security into their own hands has enabled you to ship more secure software? Yeah, so security is now just a normal part of our development process. The analysis is embedded inside of our pipelines, and that allows us to do like what Babifa was saying with the secret scanning. So we're identifying if there's any secrets that are potentially being exposed in our code, like credentials and things like that. We have the code scanning as well, so it's detecting vulnerabilities in our code. And then we have that Dependabot tool, and what that does is it identifies vulnerabilities in our dependencies, and it allows us to better manage our dependencies. So it automatically fixes um, some dependencies if it detects a vulnerability, and when it can't actually fix it automatically, it will then suggest to the developers different ways that they could fix it. That's minimizing risk in upgrading or changing the version of that dependency. And one of the nice things about that is that since it's in our pipelines, we're remediating vulnerabilities before a PR is even merged. So before the code is getting into our main branches, it's already clear of a lot of the vulnerabilities. And since security is embedded in our process like that, it gives us the peace of mind that security is always addressed and that the software we're shipping is secure for our customers. Great. So before we wrap up, I'd love to ask one final question. For individuals or teams that may not be as advanced in their DevSecOps journey or simply don't know where to begin, do you have any words of advice for those that are looking to get started with implementing security into their development lifecycle? Yeah, so based on our experience, I can say that uh, you know don't have unrealistic expectations when starting your security um, journey because changing processes, tools, and probably getting the teams um, on the security journey will take time and it can be a real challenge. And security is everyone's responsibility in the organization and that change in mindset will definitely take time and it's very much essential. So I would say start a pilot project to integrate security into your CI-CD pipeline. And once that is successful, then you can prepare a full-scale roadmap how to bring in all of your applications into the security journey. And addressing security issues earlier in the SDLC process, uh, there are several benefits. Of course, it'll save time and reduce cost because it minimizes the need for you to repeat the process to address these security issues after the fact. Yeah, and just to add on to that, I would recommend starting with just one or two teams. Just like building a prototype or having a beta before you decide to go all in with development work or release something in production, trialing with a small team helps work out the kinks and the initial challenges. And there definitely will be some because like what we discussed earlier with the culture change, the process change, the, the tooling changes, there's a lot of factors at play and it's important to try it out in a small subset first and then bring it to the broader team. And a, a final note is that DevSecOps is about continuous improvement. DevSecOps journey won't happen overnight. Your team will never be perfect and you know the only way to really improve at this is to continuously improve by empowering your teams. And as long as you're doing that, then you're moving in the right direction. Great. I think Babitha put it best when she said that security is really the responsibility of everybody at your organization. Whether you're a small startup or a large enterprise, it's so important to think about where security comes into your development life cycle. So thank you both for sharing your insights today. We appreciate the time. Thank Thanks. you.